First we have the Montasso Mini new version for Home Assistant and today we'll dive into 2023.4 but also into the new version of the Android app that might be useful even if you're not an Android user. Stay tuned! Hi everyone, this is Alex Reed and today we'll have a look to Home Assistant 2023.4. With this new release, Home Assistant is getting closer to the mock-up that they showed us a few months ago with the new addition that they made to the dialogues and the tile. The feature number one might improve your dashboard. The tile card was added a few months ago and since then got new feature pretty much each release. And today the alarm control panel was added to it. You can see the current state of the alarm but also change the mount directly on the tile card in the dashboard. And if the new mode requires a code, you will be able to fill it with the keypad that will be prompt. The tile card also got an upgrade to support fan, so now you will be able to control the speed of the fan with a slider or with buttons if your fan has 4 speeds or less. For the feature number 2, Home Assistant gave us new dialogues for some entity types. The first one is the alarm, so a bit like the tile card, we can now select the arm mode on a revamped UI and get the same pop-up if we need to enter a pin. The second dialogue is for a cover, so if you have a garage door or a blind, you will be able to control it with either a switch or a slider. And the third one is for the fan, so we get pretty much the same UI than we got for the tile card, but also get addition for presets and some specific stuff for fans. The feature number 3 is about templates, and this is macro. This is something completely new to Home Assistant. And if you're using templates, you know that it's a bit annoying to always rewrite the same kind of logic in your scripts, automations, or pretty much everywhere that you can use templates. But now with macros, you can pretty find pretty much what I would call a function. You just have to create a file in the custom templates folder, and you will be able to reuse the same function pretty much everywhere. What I would like to see with that feature is the ability to use them as we use blueprints for automation. So it will be great if we could share the Jinja templates easily. That would be awesome. Those were the big feature in that release, but we also get support of the lock and matter and also big improvement on the database. So it's faster and more kind of your SD card. But if you're still using an SD card, you should probably move to an SSD. Now let's talk about the Android application. It was released a few days ago, it's 2023.3 and this had two major features. The first one is the ability to have multiple servers. So if you're, either if you have multiple homes or you have a dev, pro dev or staging environment, you can add them in the same application and switch between them. That will be easy to manage and all the sensors on your phone will be pushed to the different instance which is awesome. And the second one is the ability to add the application on Windows 11. So this is still a beta feature, but you can use them as you wish. To get the application on your Windows 11 computer, you will have to download the Amazon App Store. And this will be done by using the Android OS subsystem of Windows. Once you get the App Store, just go download the OS Assistant and follow the usual steps. And that's it. From there, you just open the OS Assistant tab, follow the step to configure it as you would do with your phone, and you will be able to get sensors from your laptop. This is still a beta feature because sometimes Windows will kill some background process that are used to update sensors, but you can still give it a try. And that sums up the major changes in those release. Let me know in the comment which feature you like the most, and if you enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, that will be awesome. In the meantime, well, see you for the next projects.